This is Extra Time with me, Gary James. Hello and welcome. Joining me on the show are former footballer Dave Barnett. Hi, Dave. And boxer Martin Gethin. Martin, thanks for coming on, mate. Um, let's, let's start football, OK? And, and please, Martin, you know, you can chip in as, as and when, because I know you're a big Warsaw fan and, and, and follow football as well. But, um, Dave, you, you started... Um, Playing and, and, and you've been to a number of clubs, but around here for, for, for our viewers in the Midlands, Warsaw and Blues, really, wasn't it? The, yeah, uh, the longest spell was at Birmingham City, which was quite uh, obviously exciting being a Birmingham lad playing for your local team. Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, and, and when you started there, who, who signed you? Who was the manager? There? It was uh, the colourful Barry Fry. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who the yeah. fans absolutely love. Yeah, but I think at the time it was the sort of uh, personality and character. Uh, really needed and then obviously then Sullivan's came in and so forth so it was uh, it, w it moved on quite quickly yeah but, and, and as a manager because he's, he's, he's full on isn't he you know he's larger than life Barry yes but what, what's he like in the dressing room I mean but his own admittance he, he's not a tactician as such he's more of a motivator yeah. so he had a good eye for a player and to be honest with you he gave the player the onus and empowered them to make certain decisions yeah you know um, but again he was a wheel and dealer um, he had an eye for a player, he motivated, mm -hmm. and he got the best out of, out of us, and, we, and fortunately we were successful. Uh, was he strict? Because he was like, you know, no drinking, being bed by eight o'clock, you he, know, you've got to wear a suit and tie. He wasn't doing that, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, again, I think there was ownership, I think he, he knew the personality, we were winners. Yeah. You know, he, the, the type of uh, uh, personnel he had in the change room, he wanted to win, so we'd do what we needed to do. The, the, the atmosphere was good, yeah. the, the lads got together, the camaraderie was good, so there was a lot of gets together uh, you know, after games and training, what have you. But um, when it was time to, to play, then you know, business is business. Business is business. Yeah. And of course, you also uh, played a few games under, um, under Trevor Francis. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Trevor Francis came in, and uh, obviously he was an idol there. You know, great player. He was probably mm. one of the better players in training sessions. <laughs> you know, at the time, even at his age then. Mm. Um, so I think it was a season, a season and a half or so. I was with uh, Trevor Francis Trevor. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he always comes across. Every time I've, I've met Trevor, he always comes across. He's a, he's a, he's a gentleman. Yeah. He seems sort of really chilled out, relaxed. Yeah. yeah. But again, when it comes to, to business, mm. when he was a great player. Yes. Um, did he versus Barry Fry? Was it completely different in the dressing room with Trevor or? Yeah, as we've, we've said, you know, Barry is a personality and yep. he was larger than life. There was always jokes and banter flying about and, um, you know, and he created that kind of atmosphere. Trevor was probably more strategic and organised and uh, thorough in that respect, yep. you know, from a professional standpoint. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Martin, I mean, some of the, the, the people you work with over your, your career will come and obviously talk boxing a little bit later on. But have you, do you have managers that change or do you stick with one guy that throughout you, your career to date? Or you know, have you worked with anybody that's a bit like a Barry Fry that's, that's larger than life? Um, no, I've, I've actually stuck with the same trainer of Martin um, since, since the, uh, the age of 20, 21. Right. Well, say that say that again. I, I was with him as amateur as well. Yeah. So really, since I was eight. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and in the boxing world that you know, I mean, are there any characters that that are a little bit like that? That are disciplinarians or are a little bit more laid back? Yeah, he never treats anyone uh, extra special because they're at the top of the, this mm. or that. The he treats everyone mm. exactly the same. Long. Like. Um, never. He never. Sticks to one person. He, you know, he tries to get the best out of Everybody. all of them. You know, yeah. So, yeah. He, <coughs> you know, if he wants, he wants everyone champions, not just one person. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and you, you spent some time abroad, didn't you? You, you Birmingham City, you said the longest. And you, you played for Warsaw as well. But, but then you, you went to America. Yeah. After finishing playing, I, uh, the transition was quite smooth. Actually, you know, mm -hmm. I was fortunate. I went into full-time coaching at Birmingham City, and then I went over to. I think I was there for about three or four years, and then. I went to America, decided yeah. to. I've always been quite impulsive like that, you know. And I used to actually, in the off season, I used to go over to Atlanta quite frequently. All oh, right. Uh, yeah. So I used to sort of double up as a holiday, but at the same time train. So I was ready for pre season training. So at, I always said at some stage, possibly, I'd, I'd uh, like to experience living there. Mm. So I moved over to North Carolina for three years, and then I went to 
to Florida. I was in Florida for three years as well. So it was a great experience. And you were coaching out there, were you? Weren't yeah, you? coaching. Then I actually ran a club as well oh. as chief executive, executive. So, you know, it was good insight into. It took me out of my comfort zone, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but it was in good insight into the, the business aspects yeah. of, of uh, the football. Right. Because then, I mean, we never really think of America up until recently as being a football country, and it's always been like baseball or mm. or um, their their American football. Um, so was it was it just starting to build when when you were out there, or was it was it still was it established when you? Well, there was, there was quite a momentum, you know. Um, obviously, with the, the the vast numbers, you know, and the facilities they've got, yeah. it was on the up. I think it was on the crest of a wave to a certain extent, where you know David Beckham and and so forth, and uh, you know was pushing forward. So football is always or soccer, as they call it, yeah. has been. You know, quite significant to be honest with you, even with the, the women's football as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, yes, because they had a, a, a quite a successful women's yeah. team, haven't they? That's right. And, along with that, and 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 do they typical Americans? Are they, are they big with it? They throw whatever they need to at it to make it a success, and and then uh, they, if you fail, are they do they come down on you like a ton of bricks? Or the thing is, whether it's business or with any type of sport, they're winners. Yeah. So they don't want to go into it sort of you know half-heartedly. So you know that the facilities are there. Um, the sports science and everything's centred around it, but obviously what is missing slightly is that they haven't lived it as yeah. such. So there's a little bit of naivety regarding the coaching aspects. Right. But uh, but I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Yeah, yeah. And, and were there any other former pros out there with you from the UK, or was um, were they all just Americans that were playing? Or yeah, it was it was just uh, myself. I got I had an opportunity. I went over twice, visited twice, interviewed twice, and uh, came back. And I thought this is the right opportunity. This is something different, you yeah. know. And it's about I think as an individual, it's about stretching yourself as well. You can easily stay in what you know mm -hmm. and be comfortable doing that, or you can you know go into the unknown and and, and test yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and going back to when you were playing, I mean, what, yeah. what's do you, what's your favourite moment? Do you have one? Do you have a, maybe a favourite goal or? No, goal, don't, don't, goal. I, I know. Well, I didn't that, get any other. There were a few and far between. <laughs> but, um, so, Dave, from your your, your playing days, then, um, just favourite memory? Well, it would be playing at Wembley yeah. for Birmingham City. You know, uh, being a young lad, and I uh, was engrossed with the FA Cup and um, all the journey and following the players in the hotels and the journey to the to the stadium and so forth. To, so, to get the opportunity to actually play there in over over ninety thousand people watching. You know, yeah, for, for your local club, mm. that's a dream come true. And a dream of most footballers, I'd have thought, probably every footballer Without to play at Wembley. Yes. And, and coming up to date, I, I know when, when, we, when we spoke before, uh, you're taking your lad out to Brazil to the World Cup. Yes. And something happened while you were out there that, that probably changed how you think from then to, to the present day and onwards. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was quite significant. I went, uh, took my, my lad and his friend out to the World Cup, as you said. Yeah. And um, whilst we were there, we got the opportunity to go to one of the favelas. Um, whilst in there, we saw the deprivation, we saw the poverty, and my lad's there, nine years of age, um, he was eight at the time, you know, playing football alongside these boys who had nothing, and the deprivation was just incredible. And as we came away from the favelas, my son looked at me and said, Dad, what are we going to do to help them? Wow. You know, and it stopped me in my tracks. Powerful. Very powerful, and, you know, and um, at the time I said, I'm not too sure, son, but we're going to do something. Yeah. And, and from there, it's just really escalated. I came back um, and it had been on my mind for a period of time. Um, and then subsequently, I went back in December and spoke to those who had loosely a project um, yep. which would been running for the last 10 years. But obviously they had no finance, they had no guidance. They were just trying to do what they could do for these children who had nothing. Mm. So went back, sat down and spoke to them. Um, and whilst I was there, you know, it was, there were so many sort of pivotal moments. I mean, the four policemen got killed by AK-47s. Yeah. I had to get specific permission to go into the favelas. Whilst I was there, there was a guy, six foot five, sunglasses, no top on, yeah. listening to every single word which had been translated into Portuguese and what I was saying and discussing with the children. Amazing. Yeah, so it was, you know, but, you know, as I said, it moved on so much from loosely trying to bring about a sports sort of project to now us setting up um, academies Right. which we incorporate um, education, religious studies, sports and arts. Uh, we're putting the entity together 
and um, I've got a great support group with the trustees, mm -hmm. uh, with the likes of Malika Shafak, who's, who's chief executive of, of Kaleidoscope, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Nathan Brown and, and Rodrigo Souza. They're absolutely tremendous, and they're passionate about changing um, children's lives so that they can fulfill their potential. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was a, a massive change of your life as well from that, that, just that one moment. But we'll talk more about that when we come back after the break and obviously boxing with uh, with Martin as well um, but uh, for now uh, we are going to take a break I can hear that half time whistle is, is very much uh, upon us uh, so for now please join us in the second half it's half time on extra time So welcome back. You're watching Extra Time. I'm Gary James with guests Dave Barnett and Martin Gethin. Uh, just before the, the break, um, Dave, uh, we're talking about you know, what basically changed your life for, forever at the moment mm. uh, when you went to Brazil. So, so bringing it right up to, to, to today, where are we and, and you know, has what you're doing out in Brazil actually started or is it still in the process? Well, we're in the process of getting everything strategically organised and setting up the actual charity itself. Yep. Um, we will be putting together the plan of action through our trustees, which have organized. Um, and then obviously that would be actioned in Brazil. Um, it's affiliated and all the political ramifications and so forth, you know, um, and red tape have, has passed through. Yep. So the vision is to set up academies throughout favelas in, in mm. Brazil. Okay. And, and just an ongoing program then, is it? And then to make sure it works and, 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 and grow from there. And, and the people in Brazil very much helpful and on your side and once you've got through all that red tape? Yeah, I mean, tremendous. Uh, it's been something they've been obviously looking for to try and take to another level for, for years and years. And it's just so happened that uh, potentially if we can put the plan of action together and raise the finances, mm. then we can have those employed full time in Brazil throughout different favelas, okay. you know, putting that model, the initial model in place in various areas. And, and can we get involved in, in this country? Is there a website yet or? We're setting up, it would be called Flash Academy. The website's not live as yet, as I said. We're putting all the entity together. Right. Um, and once we've done that, obviously, we'll be doing events and having a launch. Um, and then there'll be different ways of bringing about fundraising and donations, obviously. Oh, well, OK. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Well, we'll stay in touch and, and yeah. get the updates and, and follow it through, if we can, and, and get you back on. So. We're also going to be doing that in line with certain disadvantaged children here as well in, Bir uh -huh. in Birmingham. Right. Yes. So, so it's got a link in. in so it's got a link together. To, uh, that's yeah. right. Yes. That's, uh, that's brilliant. And, and on, on to boxing, um, uh, Martin. Um, you're you're one of two problems at the moment, aren't you, mate? Um, <laughs> <Just a bit laughs> your, your last fight there up, up in Hull, um, and unfortunately, didn't go your way. Um, but but you nearly won it, didn't you? You're not the guy down in in, in round <clears> two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his his has been put down, but. The actual shot that I caused him, if I didn't think he was going to get up, yeah. um, you know, it was um, it was a bit of a close first half. But being as he's the own boxer, it'd have been I just I just thought I'd give it him um, anyway. Yeah. Um, but like the second half, because um, the the I think the tactic, the way they they planned on, they worked on with me, is <clears throat> they thought I was just going to go at him, throwing hundred and odd shots like at him and and just keep on him all the time so we could just pick, pack, bang and hold on. Punch, 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 hold. But I just took centre of the ring and um, I think he just threw his game plan out the window and mm. that's when I caught him with the left hook. And, and of course, like yourself, Tommy Coyle, you were fighting, a well-respected boxer. Yeah. And, and um, you say you caught him, he went down and, and it was the bell that saved him, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah otherwise, was, a different uh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause, uh, I was on the attack then, he was, he was on the ropes and I caught him with some more shots and as it, we thought it was all going to go over the bell went. So. Yeah, and, and uh, on another side of it, the reason you, you retired from that fight in, mm. in was it round five, yeah, yeah. I believe, because you had a problem with, with your ears, a perforated eardrum, I mean that... Yeah, well, but it was both eardrums. Both? Both oh. eardrums, but um, I was in a specialist uh, last week and he said... Um, this one's, you know, this because I had grommets when I was a kid as well. Like, right. Um, but this one's the worst one. He's got the, he's still got actual scab and it's like it he, got, you know, uh, in detail with it. Right in there, like, yeah. and it was, it's, 
on the way back, I couldn't, I could barely eat a sandwich. It was hurting me. I've, I've never had that. I don't know if, if Dave, you've had anything like that, but I can't imagine that sort of pain. Just, just normal earache is bad enough, but that mm. must be awful. But yeah, that was again his that was again his tactic again. That was trying yeah. for the ear on because yeah. it happened previous fights. Like and mm. as he as he actually he, he was, I spoke to my brother. Like he was watching. He helps me out with my own gym as well. Yeah, he was actually slapping, just swinging it around, just slapping the air that's just right. to, to get that suck of air into your ear. And it pops the ears on there. And that's what that's that what was his it. tactic was. He actually had the interview and he was telling what he's saying. That's, <laughs> that's what, what he's saying. Was. Yep. Keep so, it to yourself. <laughs> so, like Dave, coming up today, um, I know you've you've got you've got your own gym. Yeah. Um, so at the moment you're just training and, and running the gym, are you? Or I mean, you, you obviously you need to wait and see the specialist, as you say. Yeah. Um, but if 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 it's a worst scenario, you've got your gym. Tell us about your gym and how that started and some of the lads that you've got coming through at the moment. It's actually coming to the third year this week. Mm. Um, the, the, we had the gym open. Um, there's a lad I know. He had, I think he had it two years before we did. Yeah. Um, is it in Warsaw? Is it, or is it? It's in, yeah, in Warsaw. Well, Aldridge. Aldridge, Aldridge yeah. down the road. Like, um, Posh Warsaw. Posh Warsaw. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, um, and there's, there is some good, good lads coming through. Um, we had one... Uh, Box Friday just gone, yeah. and uh, he won it on their home show on the split season lock, and uh, he, was, he was. I couldn't get there because I was. I was I had to go out with the missus lot. And, uh, <laughs> well, the missus, the wife. Really. Uh, so sport, really sport doesn't change anything, <laughs> yeah. does it? Yeah. No, yeah. When, when that lady indoors shows, that's it. Orders, that's that it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and uh, they sent it through. Yeah. So where, where, like, so. where do a lot of your lads come from? Are they, you know, are, are Council, they... Warsaw, yeah. all, them at all just around the area. Yeah. Do you do anything with the local schools? Because I know some of the, some of the, the, the boxers or former boxers as well have got gyms. They they do a lot in in the local schools and the community. Do you do, you do anything like that at this point, or is it? Still yeah, early days? yeah. I I do it with Warsaw. You see, um, I go into well, Warsaw give me some scores. What scores I've got to go into and mm. and teach them a, a bit of boxing. This is like the football club. Warsaw, Warsaw, Warsaw football, football club. club yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, they put me through some schools. I think there's one in Dawson, and Great Worley and mm -hmm. the Delves that, and all that area. Like, so, and the kids really enjoy it. Though. Um, yeah. I enjoy it as well. You get some of the little cheeky ones. But <laughs> <laughs> put the gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, it's, uh, they're really good. They're yeah. all really good. They're, once they get to know you and that, they start to listen to you more. And, and how about, how about the, the girls in boxing? Got the girls in boxing. You. There's a couple who actually do are interested in doing some boxing, mm. like, um, but we haven't actually got any carded up or anything yet. Not yet. No, no. Yeah, quite funny. I was I was I was talking to actually a friend of my wife's, and she does boxing, and she's um, she's a, a, a PA, a personal assistant at one of the big um, accountancy firms, so she does boxing. Uh, there's another one of her friends who's a, an air hostess who's absolutely stunning. Is a boxer, yeah. and another girl is a model. Is a boxer, and they look at <laughs> and you go. No, <laughs> you, you, you know, if you sat them down in the room and said, "What do those girls do as a hobby?" You'd never guess because it's it's, it's becoming a big sport with women, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we had um, I've forgotten the name now, but the um, the girl that represented GB at the Olympics um, and won I think she won the gold, didn't she? Yeah. For us, uh, and I think that was that that I think opened um, the way for a lot of women to to think actually, yeah, mm. I wouldn't mind having, having a go at that. Yeah. That was, yeah so you so you don't you don't discourage it then? You 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 would actively encourage. If girls want to come to the gym, yeah, yeah, I'd welcome them in. No problem if they want a box. It's it's, yeah. it's up to them, isn't it? Really, mm. I can't say I'm not I'm not training you because it yeah. wouldn't be fair, would you? No, no, you know, no. But say you're quite you're quite happy. I'd, to... I'd, I'd be quite happy yeah. to train them. Like obviously, you know, when it first when it first uh, came out that the girl boxers are allowed to box and all that, so it was, it was, it was a few against it because you don't expect to see girl girl. Boxing, boxing, really. Yeah. You so. expect them to do ballet dancing. So, and, all that and anybody that's thing. interested in contacting you regarding the, the gym, because I know you do personal training as well, don't you? Mm, Your personal fitness yeah, instructor. Yeah. Have, have you got? Have you got a website or? Yeah, it's um, World Style Boxing Gym. I can't think of the full. Uh, thing oh, yeah. Is, but, yeah. <laughs> well, or, or if they Google you, Google Mark. Yeah, yeah, Mark they'll, see, yeah they'll see it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Or just on World Style Boxing Gym if they put yeah. that in there. That'll come that up. They'll anyway. find you. Yeah. They can. They, yeah, can they can. They can do stuff. So, so fingers crossed that um, you get the okay from. Yeah, I'll go to see him in another five or six weeks, yeah. and he'll he'll have a look at that. The he was the way he was talking. He's saying I should be okay to you carry on boxing right. anyway. Yeah. So he's not going to try and stop because it's your passion. It's what you grow up to, mm. to grow up to be like. Mm. So and it, and it would and a, and a bit like maybe a footballer. If you break a leg or or do something like that, you're off for a while. When you first go back, 
are you sort of thinking, oh, I'm not going to go for that tackle? Is, mm. is it something like that with boxing? If you get the all clear, the next, the first fight you have after the all clear, is that is that going to play on your mind at all? No, no, because it was the same. I had um, a kidney operation, which I didn't know was wrong with it, but it's, um, same thing with if I had one punch and he could have gone infected or anything mm. like that. Had that done, and I come back and I won numbers of fights after that, and mm. then won the British title and went fourth for the World yeah. Eliminator slot. So, you know, once that's done, I've had I've had a bit of a rest like I did before, mm. and uh, after you come back, I'd, yeah. I'm coming back at different weights and go for the. What, what, what weight were you fighting at? At the or were uh, you fighting at the I moment? was I was at lightweight, yeah. um, but I'm moving up to lightweight now. Right. So hopefully, get yeah. a bit stronger as well. I think. As you get harder, it's a bit harder, isn't it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, good. Been good. a chapter a lot well, too. Okay, well, uh, hopefully uh, that 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 all works out and, and stuff. And do do, do, you, do you any do anything with boxers when you were playing football? Do they have any? Because I know one or two tend to they, they, like you with Warsaw. They come and train with some of the players sometimes. And, mm -hmm. and that. Did, that, did anybody any local Birmingham lads come and train with you at, at Blues or it? Um, not as such. I did some. Uh, uh, kickboxing, really? yeah, I did quite oh. a bit of kickboxing from a young age, but uh, which helped with flexibility and, and core strength and so yeah. forth. You know, yeah. so it was really beneficial. Oh. Yeah. Well, gents, um, time has beaten us, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, as always, another final whistle does approach. Uh, many thanks to, to Dave Barnett and to Martin Gethin. Thanks, guys, really appreciate yeah. that. Um, and if you want to get in touch with the show, uh, then please email extratime at bigcentre.tv. Maybe you've got a suggestion for guests you'd like to see on the show or tell us about a sport we're not talking about. Thanks for watching, but that's it. It's full time on Extra Time. Mm -hmm.